Good morning. Today is Friday, December 3rd, 2021. I want to share with you something based on an essay by Rabbi Yochanan Zweig. There is a complicated, involved discussion about what creates a minion. Discussion throughout the Talmud. The Torah tells us, and we've quoted this verse before in a slightly different context, V'nikdashti besok b'nei Yisrael. God says, I will be sanctified when I am praised in the midst of the Jewish people. Which we understand to mean that there are certain prayers, we can pray anytime, anywhere, but there are certain prayers, prayers of sanctity, we refer to these prayers as Dvarim Shibikdusha, prayers of sanctity, like the Kaddish, like Baruchu, like reading from the Torah, and several others. Those prayers can only be recited when God is being praised from within, among the Jewish people. Besoch B'nai Yisrael. And once there is this Besoch B'nai Yisrael, this gathering of Jews that God considers the, the creation of a holy entity, then everyone else who joins in, men, women, and children, become part of this holier convocation entitled to offer to God these special prayers that can only be offered with a minion. Obviously, we've been discussing recently the idea of the importance of shul and hopefully coming back to shul and davening with a minion. But this is the one of the basic aspects of what it means to be able to say these prayers that can only be said when God recognizes us as forming a group that is besoch b'nei Yisrael, v'nik dashti besoch b'nei Yisrael. The question is, what is that number? How many is required to constitute a minion, number one? And number two, what does this tell us about the nature of public prayer that is different than private prayer? Because again, remember, prayer can be done anywhere, anytime, by anyone. So we have to figure out what the difference is going to be when it is done as a public prayer deserving of this line, V'nikdashti b'soch b'nei Yisrael. So, what the Talmud does is the Talmud uses this word b'soch, in the midst of, which indicates a group, a gathering. And then the Talmud looks for other places in the Torah where the word besoch or toch, a form of that word, is used with a certain number of people that we can identify how many they are. And if we connect the word besoch to another narrative where the word besoch is used and a, a specific number of people are mentioned, that will derive for us how many people are required to form a minion. You know that there are two Talmuds. There is the Talmud Bavli, the Babylonian Talmud, which for us is the main Talmud. It's the most authoritative. But there is also Talmud Yerushalmi, the Jerusalem Talmud. That was the Talmud that was done and edited by the rabbis in Israel. The Talmud Bavli was mostly mostly records the positions of and was edited in Bavel and Babylonia. The Talmud Yerushalmi was done in Israel. While the Talmud Bavli, our Talmud, goes through a rather convoluted discussion, the word is used here and it seems to be here and maybe it's coming from there, the Talmud Yerushalmi has a very straightforward, relatively simple explanation of this and it comes from our Parsha. Talmud says as follows. The Torah tells us, Yosef is already in Egypt. He's in charge of all of the food. There were seven years of plenty. Now comes seven years of famine. 
And people from all over start to come to Egypt because it's the only place that there's food. Yaakov with his sons, his family is living in Israel. They don't have food. There's a famine there also. Yaakov tells his sons, go down to Egypt and purchase for us some food and bring it back so we'll be able to survive. The Torah says that the ten sons of Yaakov went to Egypt. There were ten, right? Because there were a total of twelve. Yosef was not with them. He was already in Egypt, unknown to, to Yaakov. Binyamin, the youngest, remember, Yaakov was not willing to send along with the other brothers. So there are ten. Ten brothers. And the Torah says that when they came to Egypt, they entered Besoch Haba'im, in the midst of the other arrivals. What does that mean? Rashi says it means that they entered not all together, but they entered through different gates, through different entrances. One came through this border crossing, another came through that border crossing. They entered Besoch. So the Talmud Yerushalmi says, here we have this word Besoch, among a group entered. What was the number of the group? It was ten. Ten sons. Therefore, ten men form a minion. Seems simple. Seems straightforward. But the Bavli, the Talmud Bavli, does not even mention that seemingly simple, straightforward proof. So the question is, why is this line of reasoning clear and obvious to one group of scholars, but is not even considered according to another group of scholars? And much more important than us for, for, uh, to us is the practical question, what are we supposed to learn from this? So listen to Rashi. Rashi says that Yaakov told his sons, when you go down to Egypt, don't all ten of you enter through the same gate. Because if you do, it's going to look suspicious. Ten men, foreigners, from clearly one family, maybe they were kind of intimidating looking, Remember just what two brothers, Shimon and Levi, had done to the people of Shechem? They were somewhat fierce. Maybe it would be intimidating. Maybe it would arouse some kind of suspicion. Don't go in at the same gate. Each one go in through a different border crossing. Each one enters separately. In fact, Yaakov's fear was founded because later... When they are meeting with this person who they know to be the second in command, but they don't realize is actually their brother, Yosef, he says to them, maybe you're here to, as spies. Maybe you're here not because you want to buy food, but because you're trying to find out our weaknesses and you're going to attack us. Yo Yosef actually accuses them of being spies, which is what Yaakov was afraid of. So Yaakov told them, come in through different gates, come in through different border crossings. Then there's a second opinion. The second opinion is that the br Yaakov didn't tell them this. The brothers on their own decided that they were going to enter through different gates because the brothers, having been sent to Egypt for food, remembered who is in Egypt. Yosef. We sold him to the merchants who took him to Egypt. There's a very good chance many years have passed. It's very possible we will not cross paths with him, but let's at least be on the lookout to see if we find him. Because they knew that he might be there. They knew, of course, that he was alive. Yaakov didn't know anything about this. So the brothers decided we're going to all enter through different gates and travel different routes through the city to increase our chances of being able to find Yosef. We want to find Yosef. We want to apologize to him. We feel bad about what we did all those years ago. 
So we want to find him. So by each of us entering in a different way and traveling through Egypt in a different way, when we meet up, we will have covered the most ground with the most chance of finding Yosef. So here's the lesson. A minion is not just 10 men praying in the same room. 10 men praying in the same room are 10 individuals. A minion is when the group that is there, 10 men plus whoever else is there, the men, the women, the children, that everyone is who is there there is a collective meeting of the minds. There is an understanding that we are coming into this shul, into this room, in order to be united with each other for a common purpose, to praise God, to pray to God. And we have a common cause and goal that we should form through the commonality of our purpose and through the unity of our goal. This entity, which is deserving of God saying, Vinikdashti Basok B'nai Israel, I want to be sanctified by this group, not this collection of individuals but by this cohesive group that is joined together, that is bound together. That's who I want to be sanctified by. And therefore, these specific prayers that are only said under these circumstances, Kaddish, Kedusha, Baruch Hu, they're reserved for this group. If the brothers had entered, so we have the word Betoch, Toch, we have the number 10. So why doesn't the Talmud Bavli use this as a source of 10 to form a minion? Because if you assume the answer that Rashi gives, that the reason that they entered through different gates was so that they would not be suspicious, the truth is they did not want to be associated with each other right? They wanted people to think of them as separate. They did not want to be united at that moment. Yes, of course, there were brothers. Yes, of course, later they would meet together. But when they entered, when they were referred to as toch, when they were entering the country, they wanted to be separate so as not to arouse suspicion. That doesn't form a minion. That's 10 individuals. But according to the second opinion, that the reason that they entered through different gates into Egypt is because they had a common purpose. They all had the same goal. We want to find Yosef. So our strategy is, you come this way, you come that way, you come that way. It will increase the potential for being able to find Yosef. That says the Yerushalmi, is an ideal source for this concept of a minion. Because they shared a common purpose. They were working together in concert, cohesively, to attain a unified goal. And that's why the Talmud Yerushalmi says, this is the source of minion, because this is the paradigm, this is the model of what a minion is supposed to be. Individuals who gather together for a specific purpose, who are bound to each other, who are all facing in the same direction, literally and figuratively. And that's why, according to the Yerushalmi, it's these ten brothers united in the common goal of finding Yosef that defines for us the minimum number of people required to form a minion such that all those who gather to that group with their common purpose, facing in the same direction, literally and figuratively, are deserving of being able to praise God with the higher level of sanctity, v'nikdashti b'soch b'nei Yisrael. When we attend shul 
And if you are attending synagogue, you're blessed. You should be blessed by Hashem. And if you're not yet attending synagogue, hopefully soon you will be comfortable to do so. But when we go into shul, we're not just sitting in a room with others. We're not just walking in and sitting down in a seat and it happens that there are other people sitting around the room. That's not what's happening. And if that's what we think is happening, if that's how we view it, we're missing the main part of why we're there. When we walk into shul and sit down, we are achieving a meeting of the minds of everyone who is there. We are connecting with each other. Coming into shul and sitting down and beginning to pray is an act of of prayer, but before the act of prayer, it's an act of, it's a social act, an act of connecting. I'm connected to you. You are connected to me. We have a common purpose, a common goal. And it's when we join like that, with that higher level of holiness, then we're deserving of saying these special holy prayers achieving the Nikdashti Besoch B'nai Yisrael. That is what is supposed to be happening to us. And that is what is available to happen to us when we join together in public prayer. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a wonderful Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.